Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Guys, uh, preemptive like. I, I'm really curious if any animals I'm about to speak of could pop up on this video, but do any of you live in an area where feasibly, with within reason, of course, like, I, I live in North America, there are grizzly bears, black bears in North America, very unlikely to be over here, but you, does anyone live in an area where feasibly, if you walk outside, an animal could kill you, you know? That's pretty insane. I know Australia, like, if the, it, pretty much are there venomous animals near you that could do damage to humans? Um, it doesn't have to be carnivores. could be just large herbivores like a bison. Moose are huge, by the way. Enormous. A anyways, I'm going off topic here. Five animals that are back in the UK. From time to time, and for various reasons, some animals can and have gone extinct in the UK. In this video, I'm going to show you five of them species that have gone extinct, but are now back here living in the wild. First up Love is birds. the largest bird of prey in the UK, the white-tailed eagle. These birds, with a massive wingspan of up to 2.4 meters, are known as flying barn doors because of their sheer scale and size when in the sky. 2.4 meters. What? Unfortunately, such large birds that's need a lot of That's huge. Wait a second, that's enormous. Space and food, and due to the ever-changing landscape and increasing persecution from people, they went extinct in 1916. So, I feel like a baby could fly on one. Well, it'd probably eat it. But yeah, that's huge. There several, Sorry. They went extinct in 1916. There were several attempts to reintroduce them from the 1950s and 60s, but they were finally re established using birds from Norway in 1975. In 2007, further reintroductions were carried out in Scotland. And more recently, since 2019, 25 young eagles have been released on the Isle of Wight, with 35 still to be released. There are now more than 140 breeding pairs in the UK, and more than 100 young birds who have yet to start breeding. Oh, beaver. Oh, two animals that I love, beavers and just birds in general, but... Uh... Now I wonder what animal, what bird on the planet has the widest wingspan? Some vulture or something? The next species is one that has the potential to completely change the landscape in low-lying areas of the country, the Eurasian beaver. These large rodents went extinct here in the 1600s, following years of hunting Her. for their fur, meat, and a secretion called castorium, which they produced to mark their territories. Unlike white-tailed eagles, which were released as part of a planned reintroduction, the beaver's return to the wild is complicated and somewhat shrouded in secrecy. The first wild living beavers were spotted in 2001 on the River Tay in Scotland. There were several theories for how they got there, including that they escaped from private collections, but also that they were deliberately released. Following this, the Scottish Government in 2008 agreed for a trial release of beavers at Knapdale Forest. This lasted until 2014, and in 2016 the Government finally announced that it had been a success and that the beavers could stay. Meanwhile, much further south, another suspicious beaver introduction had occurred, when three beavers were spotted in the wild on the River Otter in Devon in 2008. Until this day, no one has publicly admitted where these came from, but once the government found out that they were breeding, there was a call for them to be removed. Thankfully, the British public stood with the beavers, and now, following years of study, there is a nationwide program to reintroduce them. I can't find an exact figure for how many have been released so far, but I would confidently say it was into the hundreds by now. It would be interesting to see how landowners, farmers, and anglers are impacted when the beaver numbers continue to increase. 
So I'm assuming, I, I know that otter pelts were really valued. And uh, because they're both, you know, water, they're mammals that, you know, live in kind of co cold climates and, and in water that the fur they have is super insulating or just waterproof. But it might sound a little bit unrelated, but I just thought of it with the beaver tail. You guys ever notice how all marine mammals swim like this, whereas fish in the sea swim like this? You ever realize that? Isn't that kind of strange? You know? Next up is a species that's almost gone extinct twice. The UK's loudest bird, the bittern. Their up and down story starts in the 19th century when because of pressure from hunting and changing the way that wetlands are managed, ah. the bittern went completely extinct as a breeding bird. For unknown reasons, they recolonized from mainland Europe and when a nest was found in 1911 in the Norfolk Broads, things were looking up for the bittern. They continued to grow in numbers until 1954 when there were an estimated 80 territories spread throughout the wetlands of East Anglia. Is it flightless? Uh, interesting bird. At first it looks like a, a cuckoo bear or a bull. When there were an estimated 80 territories spread throughout the wetlands of East Anglia. The story doesn't end there though. Over the next 40 years, bitter numbers plummeted once again. And in 1997, there are only 11 adult males remaining here. In response to their decline, partnerships formed across the country with organizations such as the RSPB, the Wildlife Trust, and large landowners raising the water levels in wetland areas to better suit the way that bitterns nest and feed. This has been a resounding success, with more than 200 males recorded calling in 2020. The next animal is in a bit of a grey area as if it should be included on this list or not. Wild boar went extinct in the UK due to hunting in the 13th century, and officially... Such a top tier animal in my opinion, just pigs in general. They have large litters, um, they're pretty uh, aggressive and hardy, you know, defensive, offensive. They can eat a lot of different things. Um, what else? I mean, those three things there alone are just... I just feel like it's, it's a very capable animal. They are no longer recognized as a native species. How native and non-native is defined in this country is a bit confusing, given that barn owls are officially listed as both native and non-native. In my mind, a species that was naturally here and only went extinct because of people should be considered native. Anyway, getting back to the boar of the moment, because wild ah. boar meat is highly valued, they were kept by farmers, Knee and slap. either because of deliberate releases or accidental escapes, they have found their way back into the wild once more. There were currently an estimated 4,000 at large in various locations around the country, notably the Forest of Dean, which is home to more than a thousand of them. Wild boars are great ecosystem engineers, creating habitat with their rooting up of soil, and they are thought to have a massive, positive impact on biodiversity. However, these are large, powerful, and sometimes aggressive animals, and they regularly come into conflict with people over the damage that they can do to gardens and crops. With the huge swing of opinion oh, towards and the- and they're somewhat intelligent, right? I think. ...value of rewilding in this country. With the huge swing of opinion towards the value of rewilding in this country, it is possible that eventually they'll be redeemed as a native species, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. Cute little piggies. Next up is another bird, is which that? just like the bittern has almost gone extinct twice, the capercaillie. This large member of the grouse family is native to Scotland. Another flightless bird? Looks like a, a cooler version of a turkey. But has not had the greatest fortune over the years. They first went extinct in the 1800s, with this being put down to large-scale deforestation. However, they were subsequently reintroduced in 1837 using birds from Sweden, and although what exactly was done to help them isn't really clear, these birds flourished, and by the 1970s there was an estimated 20,000 of them. 
But all wasn't rosy in the Capacaley world, and over the next 25 years, the numbers plummeted by around 50%. Sadly, this decline has continued, and although there are multiple suggestions for why they are still declining, nothing has worked so far in order to protect them. A cool looking animal. Apparently, they are susceptible to competition for food with grazing livestock. They have a habit of crashing into deer fences, and they can fall victim to predation from the recently recolonizing pine mutton. There are currently around 150 male capercaillies left in the wild. Pine martin? Is that like a ferret? There are currently around 150 male capercaillies left. Um. Oh, I was sort of right. Yeah, it's uh, these things. Sorry. In the wild, and conservationists once again fear that in the next 20 years they will go completely extinct. At the beginning of this video, I said I'd talk about five animals, but being the gift that keeps on Question. giving, I thought I'd throw in a bonus animal to get the conversation flowing the European bison. It's unlikely that this species ever actually lived in the UK, but their now globally extinct relative the woodland bison did. They went extinct around 12,000 years ago, and you won't be surprised to hear that people weren't too good at keeping records back then, so it's not exactly clear why. There is currently a plan underway to introduce European bison to England, and the first four animals have recently been released into a large woodland enclosure. It's hoped that they can help to manage woodlands in a semi-natural way in order to replicate the work of the large herbivores oh. that once did roam our countryside. Question. I'm interested to hear what other people think about this, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. Is it a good or a bad idea? Eh, just, you know, just try it. Good, good thing I'm not a scientist. Um, oh, right. I, I know I'm, I'm kind of nitpicking in semantics here. You know, technically, I, I, I get it, right? I don't want to be that guy, but I'm going to be right now. Isn't anything... Why is it that what we call what humans do to an environment as unnatural? Doesn't that not make any sense? Since humans... I, I'm getting into the weeds here, okay? I understand. It's like, okay, I get it. But still, okay? I just Maybe someone will answer this and, and be interesting. If humans are also animals, then isn't anything we do also just de facto a natural thing to do I, it's not like we're aliens who came to this planet from nowhere and we're messing around with the ecosystem it's, we evolved with every other animal on the planet um and, and so if we do anything i i am i just i i know what they mean by unnatural but not caused by humans but if it, it, it makes me think like I don't know. I'm kind of annoying myself here. But yeah, what do you think about that? Is anything that humans can do technically unnatural? Because it's like you're calling humans unnatural, and that doesn't make any sense. Anyways, I, I know what the point of the term is. Anyways, uh, is that the end of the video? So there we go. Did you know all of those animals had gone extinct? And did you know that they were back here in the countryside? I didn't know about some of them video, at all. Check out this other British wildlife video. And if you like that, subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time. Yeah, I'll subscribe for sure. Interesting video. Um, I, it makes me want to watch David Attenborough videos, but I can't record those because BBC. Interesting. We'd love to see any of your guys' answers to my questions, any comments overall. Uh, and I will see you guys next time, all right? Hope you're all doing well. Bye, guys.